Marie, can I have that information for Mr. Rashid's group? He'll be here in a few minutes. I'm working as fast as I can. Mr. Evans will be with you very soon. That's fine. I'm a little early, aren't I? Just a few minutes. Is your last name pronounced LePage? It's LePage, actually. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. Now, is it Ms. LePage or Mrs. LePage? Um, it's Ms. But you can call me by my first name. Do you mind if I call you Ms. Lepage? I love the way it sounds. That's fine. I'm keeping you from your work, aren't I? I'm sorry. I'd love to talk, but I really have to get this done right away. I understand. You're not from here, are you? Excuse me? Your accent. You come from France, don't you? Yes. Paris, actually. That's nice. It sure is a beautiful day, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Can I have that information? I'm not quite done. What's taking so long? Mrs. Beatty, I can take you to Mr. Evans' office. He'll be here shortly. Why, thank you. Beautiful day, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> We have our first group from India coming next week. Mm -hmm. Since Mr. Rashid has traveled to India many times, I've asked him to talk to you about etiquette in India. Mr. Rashid. Paul, why don't you greet me as if I were an Indian tourist? Ask me to come with you and show me to the tour bus. Okay. Uh, hi there. I'm Paul. Oh, if I were an Indian woman, you would have just insulted me. Women and men generally do not touch. Okay. Uh, hi there. You just told me to go away. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, too close. You should stand this far away from someone. Instead of shaking hands, do this and say, Namaste. Namaste. Excellent. Now, tell me to come with you to the tour bus. Okay, come with me. This is a rude gesture in India. Do it like this. Come with me. Good, good. To the bus over there. I know, I just insulted you. <laughs> Pointing with your fingers is considered impolite. Use your chin instead. To the bus over there. I'm never gonna get this. Oh, you're doing wonderful. Oh, thank you, Mr. Oh, too close. <laughs> <laughs> And 
before you relax brush up on the facts you learned at school try to be polite and always be sure to get some friendly advice on proper
Let's get Ms. Novak's tickets ready. She may be stopping by this afternoon. Paul, are you okay? No, I feel awful. What's wrong? I've got this horrible cold. I'm sneezing. And my back is killing me. I've got this pain at my hip. My neck's been bothering me all day. And I have a stomach ache. You may have to go see a doctor. No, I hate doctors. I wonder what could be wrong. Maybe he's allergic to work. <laughs> I'm not kidding here. I'm in pain. I used to want to be a doctor, you know. Say ah. Ah, you. <laughs> now I remember why I didn't become a doctor. Paul, you really must get some medical help. A little acupuncture might help you feel better. Stay away from me. Dr. Anderson is meeting Mr. Evans downstairs in the cafe. Should we ask her to come up? She may be able to help. Great idea. I'll go get her. You might prefer an herbal remedy? <laughs> Stop it. How long have you been feeling this way? Oh, I got the cold last night, and the pain in my back started this morning. Want to try a little spiritual <laughs> healing? You're making me laugh. <laughs> well, laughter's the best oh, medicine, you know. Oh, but it hurts. <laughs> Say ah. Cover your face, Doc. <laughs> ah. Well, ah. you have a cold, that's for sure. What about the other stuff? The pain in the back and the side? Well, have you taken any medications lately? Just some over-the-counter stuff. Uh, Painkiller, cold tablets, uh, nasal spray. Well, that sounds okay. And some uh, cough medicine, vitamins, and acid. That's a lot of medicine. And some uh, decongestant. That's too much medicine in one day. That must be why you're feeling so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been around anyone else who's sick? Uh, my friend Donna's had a cold all week. We lifted weights last night for about an hour, ran five miles. He had to walk the last mile. Is that your usual exercise routine? Yep. I started it yesterday. <laughs> well, that explains it. You exercised too much. That's all? That's all. A little chiropractic treatment might help you. Uh, stay away from me. <laughs> Are you traditional in your medical ideas? That is, do you kind of believe in Western medicine, or do you like to explore non-traditional treatments such as acupuncture or homeopathic medicine? Um, I don't explore uh, non-traditional treatments as much as I would probably like to. I think there's probably a lot of merit in them, and they haven't been studied enough. I'm more traditional than anything else in my, in my medication or my medical practices. I'm more for the naturalistic approach. I like, um, you know, more na natural um, herbal medicines. In your opinion, what are the advantages of traditional Western medicine and surgery? Uh, I think the enormous amount of research and, uh, and uh, proven fact that, that, that's behind our medicine uh, just uh, makes, it, makes me feel more comfortable with it. What do you see as maybe some disadvantages of Western medicine? Um, I think at times Western medicine can make the problem worse in trying to make problems better. Are there any non-traditional therapies that you use? Um, I drink a lot of tea, actually, so I guess that's pretty non-traditional. Um, usually when I feel myself coming down with something, I will take an echinacea, which is an herbal medicine. I'll, I'll prior drink a lot of orange juice, since vitamin C helps you. But if I feel really sick, then I'll take a cough medicine.
Now, about the travel documents for the Australian group. We've had everything mailed to them, right? Mr. Evans, we gave you the package of travel documents to give to Mr. Wells the other night at dinner before he flew home to Sydney. A white envelope about this big? Yes. I gave it to Mr. Rashid before he left for Lebanon. Oh. Mr. Wells needs those documents the day after tomorrow. His group is flying in on, on Thursday. I'll call the courier. If they can pick up a package by 5 p.m., we should be okay. That gives us an hour. I'll reprint the tour information, but what about the travel guides? I can't print 25 copies that fast. I'll call copies to go and have them reprint the travel guides. They can't do a rush job. Call Harper's instead. They're faster and much more reliable. Okay. Hello? National Express. I need to get a package to Australia ASAP. If Harper's can't make the color copies that fast, we'll take black and white. Bob, are you reprinting the tickets? Yep. Hello. I need to get 25 color documents printed right away. Yes, it's very much a hurry. Who are you calling, Mr. Evans? What's that? Oh, uh, my tailor. Your tailor? <laughs> These sleeves are too long. They're driving me crazy. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for fixing my mistake with Mr. Wells. Now, I've asked Cheryl to plan a party for his group next Friday, and I'd like for everyone to help. Cheryl, do you have a plan? Yes, I do. Marie, I'd like to have you choose the restaurant for the party. I'd love to. Bob, I'll let you choose the menu. You will? Mm -hmm. Paul, could you plan the music? Yes. Good. Now, Marie, I called ten restaurants and had them give us a price for a party room. These two had the best prices. The green room is a nice restaurant. Great. That's my favorite, too. Now, Bob, about the food. I was thinking steak and potatoes well, and... Well, the client asked for fish or chicken. So, I had the restaurant put together a menu with each. Which do you like better? I like chicken more than fish, I guess. Great. Chicken it is. Now, Paul. Let me guess. So you have a list of music choices. Yes. These look fine. Great. I think we're all done. You see how easy it is to plan something when we do it all together? <laughs> so glad we could help.
Another wonderful dinner, Cheryl. Thank you. You're welcome. I really enjoy cooking, actually. When I was young, I thought I was going to be a chef. You could be a chef. These cookies are fantastic. Why didn't you become a chef? My mother talked me out of it. She thought I would always have to work at night. She was afraid I would never meet a man and get married. She was probably right. If you were a chef, you wouldn't have met Bob. How do you know? Before he met you, Bob only ate fast food. <laughs> it's true. Your mother must have been very happy when you and Bob got engaged. She was. Hey, you'll never guess what Bob was going to be. Cheryl. A rock musician. A uh, basketball player? No. 
Bob was going to be a dancer. He was actually in the state ballet when he was young. No kidding. You never told me this. I could have been a great dancer. <laughs> what made you change your mind? The diet was too hard. I had to stop eating everything. Chocolate cake, fried chicken, potato chips. I tried. I might have been able to do it. But then they said, no more bread and butter. <laughs> bread and butter, can you believe it? And that was the end. Wow, Bob, I never knew. Do you enjoy watching ballet at all? I can't. I'd like to. But as soon as the music starts, I get very, very... hungry. <laughs> What about you, Mr. Evans? What did you think you were going to be when you were younger? If I tell you, will you try not to laugh? Of course. I always thought I would have my own television program to talk about etiquette. I didn't know you were so interested in etiquette. I have always loved etiquette. I think I would have made a great television etiquette teacher. Well? I think you could still do it. It's perfect for you. Really? Why? Well, you're very polite, for one thing. You always know which fork to use at a restaurant? That's a real talent. <laughs> You've taught me a lot about the customs of other cultures. Maybe I could still give it a try. Topic, dinner conversation. If your international guests look offended and are leaving the table early, you've probably chosen a topic that's taboo in their home country. Find out what's acceptable and what's not. Coming up on International Etiquette with Evans. What do you think? Wow. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Unforgettable. You have a real talent, all right? <laughs> Thank you. Could you tell me what your career or occupation is? I'm an elementary school teacher. My career path will be in marketing, helping uh, companies build their brand and help market products to a, the general consumer. Um, I work in um, television, and um, I would like to eventually produce and direct. Did you think that uh, you'd be in marketing when you were a child? Uh, no. I thought I'd be president of the United States <laughs> or drive a fire truck. What made teaching a good career for you? First of all, I loved children, and I liked the idea of imparting some of my knowledge to young ones. Everybody has skills, talents, and abilities. So, you know, some people are artistic, others have mechanical ability. What would you say are some of your skills? Um, I would say um, I have a lot of artistic ability. Um, I did a lot of art in um, school. Uh, good question. Uh, my skills and talents would be uh, coming up with new ideas, different ideas, creative ideas that kind of build a buzz around a product. Do you think that talents and abilities are genetic? I think they're a combination of both genetics and environment. I think that you are born with certain um, qualities that your parents, I think, are, have and, and just living with the, the people around you and, and, and um, learning from your teachers and those that you're constantly interacting with, you pick up certain skills.
No. I didn't know that planning a wedding would be so hard. Marie, could you give us your opinion on a few things? I'd love to. First, how many people should we invite? Bob wants a small wedding. Twenty guests would be nice. I want a large wedding. About three hundred people. Three hundred? Yesterday you said two hundred. I have a lot of relatives who want to come. Then there's the location. I always thought I'd get married in a park or at the beach. That's so romantic. I would like to get married indoors, where I won't get wet if it's raining. That makes sense. I prefer traditional music in the ceremony. Contemporary music. <laughs> I'd like a long ceremony and a short reception. I want a short ceremony and a huge celebration afterwards. I want a white cake. And I want... A chocolate cake. I know. How are we ever going to agree on this? Don't hurt yourself. Here's an idea that might work. Plan a wedding that's big enough to include all of Cheryl's family... Sorry, Bob. In the park on Oak Street that has that building where you can go if it rains. You can have traditional music in the ceremony and contemporary music at the party. And you could have two cakes at the reception, one white and one chocolate. Sounds okay to me. Me too. Hey, we did it! Oh, yay! <laughs> I'm so happy. Excuse me. Oh, Marie, thank you so much. You're amazing. We couldn't have done it without you. Hi. Lunch time is over. Are you coming up to the office? I'm too tired to go back to the office. Planning a wedding is hard work. I need a <laughs> holiday. <laughs> Let's make today a holiday. We'll tell Mr. Evans we can't come back to work. That's a great idea. What are we celebrating? You're getting married. How about National Wedding Day? What happens on National Wedding Day? I don't know. Why am I the one who has to think about it? Why don't we make it National Singles Day instead? All the married people give gifts to their single friends. <laughs> no. Buying gifts is hard work. I want to enjoy myself on our new holiday. What about a red day? Everybody wears red clothes, and there's dancing in the street that goes on all night. How about National Buy Your Friend Another Cup of Coffee? <laughs> nice try. How about National On Time Day? <laughs> what happens on National On Time Day? You remind one another to come back to work on time. <laughs> Happy holiday. Waitress. You're from Germany. What is a wedding like in Germany? Well, first of all, you have to have a civil ceremony where you go to, um, to the city hall and well you make it you make everything official and then traditionally you go to church and have the religious ceremony and is there a wedding reception afterward usually there is of course um, after church when is everybody's waiting for the broom and the bride coming out and throwing rice at them and flowers and then the whole crew is going to a nice place, having dinner and having a party. You mentioned that uh, your family is originally from Ghana. Yes. Could you tell me a little bit about the uh, courtship and, and marriage ceremonies of your country? Um, there is a traditional, sometimes 
they do involve like the American type of wedding, the very traditional. You walk down the aisle, and but they also in um, there is also the traditional part in African culture, and um, you wear the clothing, the outfits. It's much longer. Um, sometimes it can go into the next day. Some people it extends. Tell me about the reception. They find a place to go to, or it's uh, out outside. Sometimes it's a big tent. Like it just depends on the bride and groom and what they want. And there's tons of dancing, traditional dancing, um, eating, lots of food. Um, sometimes you have somebody come in and talk about how they know him and how um, how good he is and what he's done, and you know, people giving. Thoughts of wisdom of how to be together, and it just, it's just really a great thing. <laughs> day after day, all my thoughts drift away before they've begun. I sit in my room in the darkness and gloom, just waiting for someone.
So, Mrs. Beatty, you're looking for an exciting place for your next vacation. I usually travel to major cities in Europe, but this time I want to go someplace different, someplace away from the city, as long as it's safe. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Ah. How about California? The Big Sur area is spectacular. California has lots of earthquakes, doesn't it? Well, they have earthquakes occasionally, but not very often. But it does have earthquakes. Yes. I'm not going. Okay. How about some place in Asia? A beach in Thailand? Kochang has beautiful beaches, and it's very quiet there. A quiet beach sounds nice. But they said on the news there's a monsoon in Thailand. <laughs> but the monsoon will be over by the time you go. What else can you recommend? Australia. The Australian outback is amazing. I've heard they have tornadoes in Australia. <laughs> Some parts. Where else? Jamaica? Hurricanes. South Africa? Floods. Hawaii? Landslides. You know a lot about natural disasters, don't you, Mrs. Beatty? Let's see. What about Finland? Finland? It's wild, beautiful, and very different from other parts of Europe. And nothing bad ever happens in Finland. Finland sounds good. I'll go to Finland. <laughs> Great. I'll book your tickets. <laughs> okay. I just booked your tickets to Helsinki, Finland. You'll be staying at the Palace Hotel. That's great. Excuse me, Mr. Evans. Yes, Marie. Mr. Woods is on the phone. He told me to tell you it's urgent. Urgent? He's traveling, you know. Yes. He said there's some kind of epidemic. What kind of epidemic? It sounds like it's that new influenza. But he was vaccinated for that before he left. I know. But he told me to tell you that he wants to fly home today. On the internet, it says only three people are sick. That is not an epidemic. And it's not like anybody's dying from this flu. He said he didn't want to be the first. <laughs> Where is he traveling, may I ask? He's in Finland. Finland? I just booked tickets to Finland. Mrs. Beatty, everything will be fine. You'll get vaccinated, and you'll have nothing to worry about. I'm not going to Finland. You told me nothing bad ever happens in Finland. Mrs. Beatty, I can't think of anywhere in the world you can go and be completely safe. Right here in this city, you could go outside and get hit by a bus. But you can't let that stop you from doing the things you want to do. <laughs> Look, why don't we go to lunch, and we'll talk it over. I don't think she's going anywhere. From a landslide with no place to hide You protected me from injury Even the world's biggest tsunami Has got nothing on me Because you can go faster You keep me safe from disaster You're like some kind of hero You're the best friend that I know Thank you for helping me to survive I'm really lucky to be alive When the big flood
flood came with the pouring rain They were saying that a natural disaster loomed You just opened your umbrella You were the only fellow who kept calm and prepared You found a shelter I never felt like anybody cared The way that you did when you said I will always be there You can bet your life on it And when the cyclone turned the day into night, you held a flashlight and showed me the safe way home. You called for help on your cell phone. You said you'd never leave me. You said, believe me, in times of trouble, you will never be alone. They said it wasn't such a bad situation. It was beyond imagination. I'm just glad to be alive, and that is no exaggeration. Thank you for helping me to survive. I'm really lucky to be alive Hello, Bob. Dining alone? Uh, Paul and Marie went to get newspapers. Do you mind if I join you? Oh, please, sit down. May I ask what you're reading? Um... <laughs> the History of the World. The bestseller? I'm very impressed. Reading nonfiction over lunch? I hear that it's a very difficult book. Uh... No, it's... It's a pretty easy read. I... I can't put it down, actually. <laughs> a real page-turner, huh? Do you think I could borrow it when you're done? Sure. I usually prefer fiction myself. You know, thrillers, mysteries. There's nothing like curling up with a good science fiction novel, is there? <laughs> you read science fiction, too? <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Are you learning a lot from your book? Uh, yeah, I think so. So, tell me what you're reading about right now. Um, 
This part is about Great Britain. <laughs> really? Do you mind if I take a look? <laughs> Cheryl hates when I read comics. Then I can understand why you can't put the book down. <laughs> you think that I could borrow it then? Well, I'm still reading this one, but I have another one I can loan you. I meant this one. Oh. Help yourself. Look at this. The paper says that a tornado carried a woman for 300 miles, and she lived to tell about it. I'm not sure if you know this, but that story isn't true. It's in the paper. It must be true. That paper is trash. I can't believe you're reading it. What do you mean? It's fiction. It's not news. Nothing in there is true. If you want real news, you have to read this paper. That paper is boring. This one's much more interesting. Woman gives birth to cow. Man builds house from bread. Baby with two heads? Come on, this is offensive. Storm kills 100 in Texas. Train accident kills five, injures more. Man kills wife and son. I'm sorry, but all that death and destruction is pretty offensive to me. I know that these things happened, and I know that those didn't. You don't know that. You just assume that it's true. Let's ask Bob and Mr. Evans what paper they read. <laughs> Never mind. Let's just read. That sounds good to me. Look at this, a man with four legs. <laughs> Do you folks do a lot of reading? She I, does. I do, particularly, yeah. yeah. I like to read novels and uh, mystery stories, uh, sometimes travel stories. Do you buy books or do you get them from the library? I, I buy books and I tend to trade them with friends. How about books on tape? I try that. They put me to sleep. <laughs> so, novels. You like to read fiction. What, who are some of your favorite authors? Well, I just read uh, Nick Hornby, How to Be Good, which was probably the funniest book I've ever read. Would you say it's a real page turner? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I, belly laughs on every page. So do you read anything else like newspapers or magazines? I do read magazines, yes. Yeah. Could you tell me, uh, let's see, what sorts of magazines you like to read? Um, uh, they, uh, like... uh, fashion, I enjoy fashion, details, actually. How about how-to magazines? Do you ever buy magazines about home repair or um, cooking, for instance? I buy my husband magazines on how-to magazines. He's the one that's uh, good at fixing things and repair and even cooking. Uh, how about newspapers? Do you read a newspaper? The New York Times when I'm home. Okay. And uh, what part of the newspaper is most important to you? Uh, the front page and arts and leisure. ultra-high-tech, top-of-the-line, state-of-the-art, cutting-edge TV glasses. And you're actually watching TV right now? Yeah, right here in the corner. What are you watching? 
the basketball game. Unbelievable. And Cheryl doesn't mind this? Yes! <laughs> Sorry, my team's winning. This new invention doesn't bother you. Are you kidding? If I'd known how happy they would make him, I would have bought those glasses for Bob long ago. Technology today is amazing. You know, I wish they'd invent something that would make people who talk on cell phones quieter. This guy in the cafe today was so loud I couldn't hear myself talking. <laughs> it wasn't funny. What? Oh, sorry. I was laughing at this guy on TV. <laughs> if I could invent something, it would be a thing for Bob's car that would automatically charge him when he goes over the speed limit. He drives so fast sometimes, but he'd slow down if he had to pay. No! Is your team losing? No! I heard what you said. You just leave my car alone. <laughs> Wait till you see what I've got. What is it? Well, I have this problem with my cell phone. Whenever I'm traveling with a group, I can never hear it ring or feel it vibrate. So I got this thing that lets me know whenever my phone is ringing. How does it do that? It buzzes me. Buzzes? You know, bzz, bzz. so uh, I could feel it. Does it work? I don't know. No one's called me yet. One's there. Wow, that was a big buzz. That almost hurt. Maybe it isn't working right. No, it's working fine. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Another phone call. Ooh. Hello? Hello? That's strange. Man, if I ever get used to that, I'll always know whenever my phone is ringing. Oh. take that thing back to the store before you hurt yourself. I'm going. I'll see you later. I hope he can drive okay. He'll be fine. How do you know? I'll stop calling him. Use the 
up all the acronyms and you don't know the way I really feel why'd you have to go and reinvent the wheel I keep waiting for a breakthrough innovation something to help our poor communication hey where'd you get all of that high tech taste your faith in progress is such a waste your life may be state of the art but you don't understand the human heart and you don't know the way Did you see the politicians expect to raise taxes again? Really? What does the government decide to spend our money on now? They're planning to build a stronger military. It's wrong to spend so much on the military. They should spend it on education instead. 
Can we please avoid discussing politics? Why? Every time we begin talking about politics, people get mad at each other. They should spend more money on fighting corruption. <laughs> if they were able to stop corrupt officials, maybe they wouldn't need to raise our taxes. That's true, but I think we need to spend more money on the military. Without a strong military, the world won't be very safe. That's one way to look at it, but maybe the world would be safer and better if we tried to eliminate poverty. What do you think, Cheryl? I think that if I say what I really think, you'll get all mad and call me crazy or ridiculous. Cheryl, don't be so afraid. We're only talking. I think that the government should spend more money on cooking schools. <laughs> what? Most people don't know how to cook well. I think the government should help teach them. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Are you crazy? Use our taxes to pay for cookies. <laughs> of course not. But look at you. You're all mad at me. This is why I never discuss politics with friends. But don't let me stop you from getting mad at each other. <laughs> I never knew you were so conservative. I'm not conservative. Sure you are. You always seem to want things to be just like they used to be. That's not conservative. That's just smart. <laughs> Thanks. That's the definition of conservative. Really? Well, I didn't know you were so radical. What makes you think I'm radical? You always want to change everything. No, I don't. I just want our government to realize that it's the 21st century and they need new ways of doing things. Thank you. That sounds radical to me. Bob, tell him I'm not a radical. She's not a radical. She's a liberal, like me. I wouldn't call you a liberal. Oh, really? I'd say you're more of a moderate. You're always in the middle. If I want to be a liberal, I'll be a liberal. <laughs> Thank you, honey. You can be whatever you want. You just can't be one thing and call it something else. Listen to you. You're like a little dictator. I studied politics in school. I know something about the definition of political beliefs. Is that so? So, what is Cheryl? A radical, moderate, conservative? Who knows? She's not saying. Cheryl, what are you? Would you mind telling us that much? Okay. You want to know what I believe? I believe... I believe... I believe these are the best chips I have ever tasted. <laughs> How do you feel about prohibiting smoking indoors? As a smoker, I don't appreciate it all the time, but uh, I, can, I can understand why. I think it's fantastic. Um, I think it's great. If you, don't, if you go to restaurants and nobody can smoke, the food tastes better and your clothes don't smell. How about censorship of books or movies by a government? I am 100% against censorship of any books or movies or any expression um, of creativity. Um, and I feel that when governments try to censor books or movies, then it creates a, a sort of atmosphere of, of fear and people don't get to, don't have uh, ready access to information that um, should be available to them. If you could tell me maybe two things that you think are big problems in the world today, 
I think one of the biggest problems is war, and I think another big problem is racism in this world. And of those, could you tell me, um, you know, a little bit more about what you think could be done to uh, alleviate these problems? I think actually with both problems, it's mostly about understanding each other and sitting down on a table and talk and get to know each other and and. Um, be able to make more compromises and, and understand different cultures and reasons why people do certain things certain ways. And I think we would all be much happier. Communication. Communication, that's the, that's the clue, exactly, yeah. Everyone, we'd like to ask your opinion about something. What is that? We're trying to decide where to go on vacation after the wedding for our honeymoon. We thought you might be able to help us decide on a location. An excellent idea. Where are you thinking of going? Well, Bob doesn't really like to travel, so he's agreed to go wherever I want to go. As long as the hotel has nice bathrooms and a TV. That sounds fair. What's your first choice? I've always wanted to go to Cozumel off the Yucatan Peninsula. Cozumel is spectacular. The island itself is pretty flat, but the beaches are beautiful and the ocean is so blue. Aren't there too many sharks to go swimming there? No, it's very safe. What? Oh, but it's somewhat overrated. You just said... What else are you thinking of? What about Tierra del Fuego in the south of Argentina and Chile? The scenery is extraordinary. The, the mountain ranges and national parks are breathtaking. But in June, won't it be too dark to do very much? No, plenty of people go there in June to go skiing or... But, of course, it's probably not romantic enough for a honeymoon. I've heard the jungles and rainforests in Malaysia are a must-see. They're so lush. <laughs> of course, some people feel that the scorpions make it too dangerous to hide. We could go to that hotel on Grant Street along the river. Stay in town? For our honeymoon? <laughs> well, I heard the rooms have really nice bathrooms and big televisions. You once told me that you wanted to go to Tahiti. That's right. I forgot about that. You would love Tahiti. One of the most beautiful places on Earth. And very, very romantic. Mm. Really? You all think Tahiti is a good idea? I think you'd love it. It's too expensive. How expensive? Well... Do you remember how much Mr. Rashid's vacation to Tahiti cost? Yes, I do. He traveled cheaply. Oh. Well, that's it. I'm out of ideas. I guess we'll go someplace boring. We weren't going to tell you until a couple months from now, but Paul, Marie, and I were talking and we thought a vacation in the South Pacific would be perfect. I just wish we could afford it. So, we decided that as our wedding gift to you, we'd like to send you to Tahiti, all expenses paid. You're kidding! <laughs> oh. 
We booked your flights and a hotel on the southern coast for two weeks. Oh, I don't know how to thank you. But the... And the hotel room has a spectacular bathroom <laughs> and a TV this big. I don't know how to thank you. Thank <laughs> you.